Well, I was very pleased to be able uh, to meet the legend and the leader of uh, Burmese uh, opposition, Aung San Suu Kyi. We uh, uh, remember and value very much her contribution to the community of democracies, to the founding Congress in the year 2000, and we've kept uh, in touch since then, and I'm very glad and uh, congratulate her warmly the recent success, her personal success and the uh, success of her party in the recent elections. Uh, having spoken to the uh, president of the country and now to the leader of opposition, uh, I can uh, assure you of Poland's support for a, a controlled process of transition to full democracy. Uh, what is happening in Burma uh, we uh, Poles find familiar because we also had to make a transition from dictatorship to democracy and from a command economy to a free economy and it's not an easy uh, process. We see Poland's value added here as a country with certain experiences uh, both for good and also for uh, taking lessons from that could perhaps um, be an inspiration and um, Poland will continue to support the reform process uh, in Burma and I hope part of that support will be a visit by Aung San Suu Kyi to Poland. I, I had the pleasure to invite her to Poland on behalf of the government of Poland and also the president of the Lech Wałęsa Institute has uh, passed on uh, a letter from the legend of the Polish struggle for freedom, Lech Wałęsa, and he has also invited Aung San Suu Kyi to Poland. I am very happy to, to, uh, to have met you in person at last. Um, good luck in everything you're doing and good luck to the people of Burma. It's a particular pleasure for us to welcome a Polish minister to Burma because uh, my affection for Poland, my admiration and affection for Poland goes back many years to my childhood when I would read stories about how brave the Poles were during the Second World War. I always thought of Polish men as very dashing and very brave. And then during my years of house arrest, I had ample time to study what was going on in Poland about the transition to democracy and I've always admired how the Poles worked out, worked through their problems. And today I was attending the town hall meeting conducted by Minister Sarkovsky, and I was struck by how much we have to learn from Poland. I've always known that, but I was learning actually just sitting there through a very short session. I learned so many things, and I'm convinced that we have so much more to learn from our Polish friends and that our transition will be all the smoother for the lessons that we can learn from those who have walked the same path before us. Now that we have an opportunity to have somebody so experienced in transition, I think some of you may wish to put some questions and the Minister has very kindly offered to answer them. So it is open to you. Yes, I think uh, he was putting the question to me, asking me in, in which kind of uh, areas we would like Poland to invest. Uh, we've been... I, I think perhaps I'd better answer in English for, for everybody's benefit. So with regard, with regard to investment, we've discussed this matter. It's not just where you invest, but how you invest which is very important. Apart from corporate responsibility, we would like the kind of investment that would empower our people, the kind of development aid that would empower our people. The only way in which we can truly build up a reliable, solid democracy is making the people aware of their own power, that they are the ones who will decide the destiny of their nation. So with regard to investment in aid, we would like to emphasize First of all, transparency. Transparency is very important if the people are to decide whether or not they agree with the help that has been given. And then together with transparency, of course, should come accountability. And the how, basically, would be 
in a way that will empower the people and decrease their dependency on the government. Uh, and uh, we also discussed the need for for balancing the um, uh, investments in in ethnic terms. Yes, I I always. Uh, ask that those who are thinking of giving development aid or investing in Burma should consider having programs not just in the mainly Burmese areas but in the ethnic nationality areas as well that they should always try to balance one with another because although our people are poor I think uh, in, in the mainland I think in the ethnic areas they're even poorer and even in greater need of even more aid we would very much welcome uh, visitors from Burma, from both sides, the government and the opposition, to take a look at how uh, we have structured the relationship between our, much smaller, but our ethnic minorities and the majority ethnic uh, group. Uh, in our ethnic areas, in areas where there is more than 20% of people from an ethnic minority, you can put street signs in both the official language and the minority language. You have um, ethnic minority schools, you can write your official documents in the language uh, of the ethnic minority uh, that lives in the area. And we have privileges for access of ethnic minorities to parliament. Uh, in general, uh, any political list needs at least 5% of, of all the votes cast to make it into parliament. But there is an exception for uh, ethnic minorities, which is why for the last 20 years we've had at least one MP from the German minority, um, even though they of course don't uh, make the 5% because there are far fewer of them. So the, the, these are policies that allow the ethnic minorities to feel that they are respected and I can assure you they don't make us feel threatened as to the unity of our state.